Everybody see it okay? Yes. Okay. So good evening, brothers. Good evening, Catholic Leaguers and Guy Wright uh, brothers on, this, on the call. Uh, we're going to talk about leadership styles. Uh, we know being Catholics is cap of men that knowledge is really key and knowledge is power. So I want you to focus on the knowledge of how this game of leadership is played, uh, how leaders are scored, uh, how leaders are judged and evaluated. Again, how leaders are, are scored, how the leadership game is played, and how leaders are judged and evaluated. As we go through this 50-minute session, I'll ask that you take notes uh, on this session because when you write, you remember. I want you to write right now, if you've got a piece of paper and something to write on or you, your cell phone with a notepad, uh, write down three leaders that you admire and why do you admire those leaders? This is the participatory part of it. Write down three leaders that you admire and why do you admire those leaders? Key things about leadership is, is building trust. Uh, Stephen Covey is a good author about leadership. He's got a lot, a lot of leadership books. Uh, but in terms of the speed of trust, you got to look at your intentions as a leader. Are you trying to motivate? What is your agenda? Are you caring? Are you looking for mutual benefit? Are you acting in the best interest of others and not shaming people? A lot of things are going on right now in terms of leadership. But true leadership is not shaming people. It's the essence of leadership is influence and not authority. Trust is also important. In terms of trust behaviors, you got to confront reality, have straight talk, listen first and not judge. Okay. Okay. Let's look at three styles. Again, as Kappa men, we hope we want you brothers to be more consciously competent about leadership, meaning that you know what you're talking about, you've done your research, homework, you've got an educational session on leadership, you know exactly what you're talking about versus making assumptions or guessing what might work. On the bottom of the slide, it says mistakes are costly in terms of both relationships and results. So as a leader, if you're operating in a blind or, or shooting from the hip, those mistakes are costly in terms of relationships and results. So now we're going to jump into three different leadership styles. Okay. Theory X leadership. I won't read the entire slide. I'll ask you to look at that. I'll cover the high points. You know, this kind of leader is called the boss. And we know what the boss spelled backwards is. It says SOB. This person is authoritarian. They're the center of attention. It's all about them. They're all about position and power. This is a Theory X leader. Uh, this leadership style was in vogue with the last couple of generations not so much for newer generations. But again, a theory X leader, it's always about them. It's not about the group, it's about their ego and how they want to drive the group forward. Theory Y leadership. Again, this style is much different. Look at the graphic. This person is like an orchestra leader. They're taking all the different voices, all the different opinions, and blending them together to create common goals and objectives. This theory Y leader tries to remove barriers. They're a conductor, a facilitator. It's not about them. It's about the team, the goals of the team, and how the team moves forward. This is a theory why leader. It's not about them, but how they move the goals forward and how they remove barriers. We're hearing a lot about equity today, you know, removing systemic and structural racism. A key part of that is removing barriers, structural, historical, institutional barriers. That's leadership why. Theory Z. Uh, this theory came out of Harvard. A professor named Uchi a few years back developed a leadership theory called Theory Z. It came from the Japanese leadership style and management style. Again, this leader is trying to really create freedom of team members' voices being heard. Uh, this leader also looks at using technology as a key enabler. And this current generation with the generation Y and Z uh, it's really focused on technology. This leader also focuses on core values. What do we believe in? How do we treat people? How do we see the world? How can we get along? How can we coexist? So this leadership style is highly participatory. And again, look at the graphic. The leader serves as a resource, as a resource. So let me back up through these again real quickly. So theory Y removes barriers, conductor, facilitator. Theory X 
It's all about them, the boss, power, authority, position. You know, I'm the president, listen to what I have to say. I'm the pole mark, do as I say, not as I do. Okay, it's all about position and power. These other styles are very, very different. Let me just pause and see if there are any questions. I know I'm on a time clock. How am I doing on time, brothers? I had about 15 minutes. We're doing okay? Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was on mute, so it took me a sec. You're doing fine. Okay. Are there any questions at this point? A oh, quick question. Okay. Go ahead, Jameer. In your opinion, which theory it would be the best theory for your leadership, or does it depend on the situation itself? Well, good question. There's a thing called situational leadership, which is a different model. But as a primary practice, we look at five generations in a workplace today and how, I'll say, millennials think and believe, how the generation uh, Y and Z think and believe, that theory X style isn't going to work. It hasn't really worked historically. So the best style that we can be in is really theory Y or theory Z, based upon the skills of the team. And the readiness for the team to move forward. Thank you. Great question. Any other questions? Okay. So let me shift to this. Uh, for those who are on the call, you know, when you think about theory X, Y, and Z, I want you to answer this question for yourself. What is your leadership style? What behaviors are you demonstrating that align with that style? Then I want you to think about where America is today. We're in the middle of two pandemics, a healthcare pandemic, what I call is a 418 year racial pandemic around racial equity. So based upon those two pandemics, what style is most needed today in America? I'd like for you to think about that, that question. I'd like for the, as we close to get some answers to that final question. Good, any other questions for, uh, for Brother King? Okay. So I'd like to hear some response on what style is needed most today in America, based upon where we're as a country. In my opinion, uh, I think we really need a leader who will lead by example. I think we need somebody who will say that this is the way that that needs to be done, but also he represents what needs to be done. So he says we need to treat people kindly, so he needs to say, well, I will treat other people kindly. We need to say... He needs to say, well, we need to wear masks. Well, he needs to wear a mask himself. I think we really need a guy who will lead by example. Like, I have a guy who, you ever, like in sports, you use like the geese uh, representation is where one guy steps down, one geese gets uh, down, and another geese steps up. And right. I think we we'll need that right now in America, in my opinion. So, so Jameer, what style is that, X, Y, or Z? Uh, I believe that is Z. Z, yeah, where you? Th yeah, theory Z. Theory Z. Oh. Yeah, yeah, uh, selfless, oh. selfless, creating partnerships, a selfless leadership. I'm yeah. not the focal of attention. It's all about we, not I. Yeah. It's theory Z. Good yeah. response. Also, we had a question from LG Stylo Five. Um, no, I had a um, I had a response to that. Sure. Go ahead. Um, so my leadership style would most likely be, it's a mixture of Y and Z. Okay. And I'm going to explain why. I believe that you, like, between the two leadership styles, you could pick the best out of both. So you have your democracy, and you also have your, um, you know, the people who, who are you're trying to orchestrate as a group. And I feel like the style that's most needed today is that the people of America, I believe, need to operate as a democracy and a group. And once the people are like realize what you know is best, I believe that we can move forward from there. Okay. Okay. You know, Socrates said you know thousands of years ago that the people already have the knowledge; they just need to be guided and supported. And that's theory Z. They don't need to be bossed around, told what to do just facilitate the conversation, which is a theory three Y, and help them come forward with this theory Z. So your point's well taken, the combination of both. Any other questions? 
Yeah. Thank you, Brother King. You are. You ready? Yep. Oh, all right. Good evening, gentlemen. Um, talking about game on. Let the leaders lead effective leadership. Go to the next slide, please. Can't see anything now. Oh, hold on. Oh, there we go. Watch uh, all eyes on me. Watch your thoughts. They become your words. Watch your words. They become your actions. Watch your actions. They become your habits. Watch your habits. They become your character. Watch your character. It becomes your destiny. The author is unknown. Now, based on this statement here, how many of you can agree with everything that's placed in here? That your thoughts eventually become those words, the things that you're going to say to someone, that your words then become your actions. How you actually internalize something, that's going to be your daily routine, how you carry yourself. And then those actions in turn become your habits because it's something that you do so repeatedly, it becomes a habit. Like getting up uh, early in the morning without actually using or utilizing your alarm clock to do so, it becomes a habit. Now you need to watch your habits because they become your character. And your character is the one thing that's always out there and it actually is pronounced, is actually put before you before someone actually gets to meet you. Watch your character, it becomes your destiny. Based on your character and those actions and your habits, someone is going to characterize you in a specific way. Now it's not about judging a book by its cover or anything of that nature. It's just that they've heard so many good things about who you are based on your character and your actions. How many of you actually agree with this entire statement? Yeah, I agree with that statement, sir. Are there any things you can do to put your character at risk? What are some of the things that would put your character at risk that would ultimately let you or uh, turn you away from being an effective leader? What you say? Anyone? Uh, to put your character at risk. What can put your character at risk? What the you way say? you present yourself. Okay. Anything else? The way you talk, the way you respond to certain things. Your decisions. Stuff. Your decisions, the way you talk to certain, certain things. What else? Social media, what you say, my mom. Your social media, exactly. You gentlemen have to be aware of the fact that you're always being watched. Even when you think no one's paying attention to you, you're always being watched either by someone that's younger than you, a sibling, a schoolmate, or even by people that are older than you. And you never know who's going to be the person that's going to be your mentor, write you a letter of recommendation, or possibly be a boss as you go forward. Okay, can we go to the next slide? Your move, show of hands. How many of you gentlemen play chess? Any chess players out there? I suck at chess. <laughs> It's a great game. You really need to learn it. Uh, um, I play chess with my dad, and like, basically the object of the game uh, to get as many of the other pieces off of the board without getting any of your pieces. Well, trying not to get most of your pieces off the board. And um, the main, main goal is to put the king into checkmate so he can't move anywhere. It's a fantastic game, and it actually teaches you a lot of life skills. And that's a fantastic assessment of it. Thank you for that. It's a thinking game, basically, to attack the king, basically, to, you know, get rid of all of the other pieces to the point where, you know, you basically, you know, you can't win. I, I know how to play. I'm just really bad at it. <laughs> so. It's a game of strategy, right? But it's also teaching you some life lessons. Think before you make your decisions. Our words and actions have consequences. A careless word or gesture can do more harm than we think. We all have to think before we act and reflect before we talk. Simple, it's a life lesson. You should always look ahead at different possi possible scenarios. Chess is a game of strategy. You have to be three, four, five steps ahead of your opponent so you make the right move. So they're not taking your chess pieces and it allows you to advance. Thinking ahead as in chess is a vital life skill. The decisions we make today about our studies, finances and relationships can have long-term effects that, not, that are not immediately apparent at the moment. And you should always be patient. Has anyone heard the term knee-jerk reactions to something? Yes, no, maybe so? No. No. Well, a knee-jerk reaction, say if someone says something to you and the first thing that comes to your mind, you're blurting it out. That's a knee-jerk reaction. Or uh, being cut off while you, you young men are driving. Your first response is either to flip that person off or go after them. That's a knee-jerk reaction. But what we'd like you to do, especially if you're going to be an effective leader, is to be patient. 
patience is a virtue. And I know some of your parents have said this to you because mine used to say it to me as well. Patience is a virtue that makes us strong because it demands that we resist our impulses. As it happens, virtues complement and strengthen each other. If we become more patient, we'll be a stronger and our mind will be a better prepared to reflect and make good. Next slide, please. The law of influence. What do leaders look like? Do they always look powerful, impressive, charismatic? And how do you measure the effectiveness of a leader? Can you put two people side by side and instantly tell which is a better leader? Is there a specific visual characteristic that a leader has? Can anyone tell me? And, and you don't have to agree with that statement. It's either yes or no. No. So there's no well, specific, go ahead. Well, there, I feel like there can be some specific things like what people would see is like, well, this guy's in a suit and this guy's in a t-shirt. So you would think the guy's in a suit may be in a better leader. Now that may not be the case, but automatically you probably think the guy in the suit probably the better leader. Based on a presumption, just because of their visual appearance. But what yep. about that individual's character? They haven't opened their mouth. They haven't said anything. But once they start to speak, you're going to base it on their character and their intelligence and their presence, correct? Yes. Well, that's what we'd like you gentlemen to do, to make sure that you're always conscious about your character, how you carry yourself and how you're presenting yourself to others. Okay, can we go to the next slide? The laws of priorities. Prioritizing requires leaders to continually think ahead. Again, going back to chess, those three, four, five steps ahead to know what's important and see how everything relates to the overall vision. How do you gentlemen prioritize your days? Anyone? I prioritize my days. I try to, mm, mostly I try to better myself. That's what I mostly try to do. So I, I play football, so I try to work out and try to get ready for the season, if we have a season, hopefully. But also okay. I try to study. So I try to study for school that's going on now because senior is coming up and I have AP classes, so I need to study for those. But I just, I need to, be, I'm trying to better myself, make myself a better version of myself. Okay. Anyone else? Nobody else prioritizes their day when you're in school? How do you do your, how do you prioritize? Do you keep a schedule? Do you have a journal? Use your phone? Calendar reminder? I have to prioritize my day. I mean, outside of school and in school. By doing what? Give me an example of how you uh, prioritize. Well, uh, I have a job. So if I have to do something like that day after work, I have to use good time management so I can get things done before I go to work. So you're aware of your time management. That's awesome. That's fantastic. And that's ultimately going to help you as you go through school and get into college. Okay. Can we go to the next slide? Ah, everyone, anyone who's ever seen Spider-Man or read a Spider-Man comic book, with great power. With great power comes responsibility. And great responsibility. There you go. Stop for a moment and think about it. A leadership position sounds promising, but it also corresponds with not only a lot of work, but also a great responsibility. So how many of you have leadership positions in your respective Kappa League groups? Any uh, presidents on the line? Kappa League presidents? Kappa League vice presidents? Um, I'm a vice president. Last year, JKL, I was a president. Okay. I'm a vice president. Okay. Any Kappa League uh, keeper of records? I don't, I, no, scribe. I think we call them scribes. Kappa League sergeant of arms on the line. All right, Kappa League presidents, Kappa League vice presidents. You were voted into that position. Why do you think you were voted into that position by your peers? I think I was voted into the position to um to set a good example for um for the people that look up to me. Okay. And the young man who's the vice president? I believe it was because people um believe that I was that um, I will be able to handle it. Awesome. awesome. So they've seen something in you and they believe in you enough to cast a vote for you to take that position and lead the entire group. That's part of leadership. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Willing to follow. 
Everyone likes how the red kappa fish is in the front of all the blue sigma fish. So <laughs> how do you influence others to follow you? It's called influencing. Leadership is often about influencing others to follow you, not to, the de not to their detriment, but to follow you because you all have the same mindset. Follow them because their, their best interests are your best interests and follow them because they have the same ideals, morals, and standards that you do, okay? So let's go to the next slide. Um, let's see, Kamal Francis. Uh, Kamal, are you up here? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Kamal. Kamal Francis, please tell me what is your favorite sneaker brand? Please, um, my favorite sneaker brand, definitely Jordan. Your favorite sneaker brand is definitely Jordan's. Okay, so you and I are gonna debate. I want you to be an influencer and I'm gonna be an influencer and we're gonna have the young man on the Zoom tell us which one did a better job, off the cuff. So Brother Hasib, if you can time us, each one of us is gonna have one minute to influence the entire group on our favorite sneaker brand. Do you wanna go first or second, Mr. Francis? Uh, I'll go second. You will go second. So Brother Hasib, if you could time me for one minute, sir. All right, my favorite sneaker brand are Adidas. Now, I'm kind of old school, and I know a lot of y'all listen to rap music, but growing up in Brooklyn, Run DMC is one of the forefathers of all the rappers that you gentlemen listen to. Fantastic sneaker. Did you know that Jesse Owens actually wore a pair of Adidas when he, run, when he ran in the Olympics in Germany and actually won his full, four gold medals wearing Adidas sneakers? Not only that, Run DMC was the very first rap group to walk across the prestigious Carnegie Hall stage. It comes in a variety of shades and colors. It's a classic shoe and everything that's old is new again. So I encourage you young men to go out there and just check out a pair of Adidas. And the most expensive pair of Adidas that are out there actually cost $11,000. Much more higher than your Vans because exclusive. It's much more uh, higher than what is it? Air Force Ones by Nelly. And Adidas has its own song, which came out in 1986. So check out a pair of Adidas. Uh, right. Mr. Francis, your turn. Do I go? Yes, sir. And uh, Brother Hasib, give him one minute. All right. Three, two, one, go. Uh, Jordans have been around for a long time. They have evolutionized. They were... Jordan, of course, he first uh, wore the Jordan 1s in the game. And still to this day, people are rocking Jordan 1s. Jordans are never going out of style. You can have Jordans from 2007, and 10 years later, they'll be back in stores. Jordans are casual and hooping shoes. You can wear them anywhere. Jordans also, you know, he, he, uh, um, he teams up with other NBA players like Russell Westbrook. So Jordan is not only a Jordan shoe, Jordan is also multiple shoes. And there's all different types of styles, different colors, different, different materials, the low tops, high tops, any shoe you want, Jordan has it. And Jordans are kind of, they're, they're harder to get. And um, some Jordans can be very expensive, but some Jordans aren't. But whatever Jordan you get, the, they're going to be good Jordans. I've never met a bad pair of Jordans, and I don't think anyone I know has. Everyone, that's good. Yep. Is that time, Brother Hasib? Yep, that was time. Yep. All right, gentlemen, see, an influencer, a leader is an influencer. So based off a of debate that uh, Kamal Francis and I had, who do you say is the better influencer? Do you like Adidas or do you like Jordans? I believe that you delivered um, the Adidas brand way more better because you came with facts and you came with clarification and dates and timelines. Wow. I'm going to have to. No offense to Kamal. You know, Adidas. But I'm going to have to go with the Jordans. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with Adidas. Um, Adidas were um, kind of uh, originated by like Hitler. So like, if you don't believe me, you can legit look that up. In Jordans, um, once you get past like 14, them junks are ugly. So. <laughs> Anybody I'm else? Gonna, Man, I'm going to go with Adidas because they presented it way better and had more like legitimate facts that you could that Hitler made that Adidas. you could put it in a better way. And the Jordans didn't have this stuff set up and 
he didn't go into like more in depth of it than the Adidas did. Um, I'm literally disagreeing with Mr. Sykes because he delivered um better. I'm going off of what he said instead of you know what somebody said that um Hitler produce Adidas. I mean, at this point, I really don't care. Even though I still prefer Jordan over Adidas, but um, I feel like Mr. Sykes, he delivered better. And if I knew nothing about Hitler, I would automatically go with Mr. Sykes because he came with a better proof timeline. Yeah, his advertisement was pretty good. It's about influencing. And yeah. I thank all y'all for the comments. And for the young man who's talking about, well, he, they weren't done by Hitler. He was part of the uh, Nazi party. And you're absolutely right. That is factual information. The maker of Adidas were two brothers and they're part of the, the Nazi party. But it has to do with the influencing and it, and it has to do with leadership. So that's what I'm trying to get you gentlemen to understand. And that's what all of us here, the Capital League men, uh, mentors, are trying to get you to understand. It's how you present yourself. Because to be an effective leader, to be an effective orator, you come with your facts. And Kamal, I know I put you on the spot and I do appreciate you participating. But you are a leader in our Kappa League and Columbia Maryland Alumni Chapter. The younger men look up to you. They listen to what you say. I've given you the opportunity to be an effective leader in a lot of the functions that we've had. And, they've act, and they have effectively followed you. So to be an effective leader, you have to present, you have to project, you have to have that air of confidence so you can influence someone. Follow, gentlemen? Yeah. Um, and also one more thing. I'm sorry. This is gonna be the last one. Somebody, um, somebody said that um, that the Adidas symbols was influenced by Hitler, right? No, it's not the symbol. The, the shoe manufacturers, the original shoe manufacturers, oh. were brothers okay. who, were part of the, who were part of the Nazi party. That's a, that okay. is a fact. Okay. Well, I also wanted to say that the African and Dinkra symbol, which was um, actually very common in Africa, was used to create the swastika. So I just want y'all to also to know that, but that's something else. That's a different conversation. No, not knowledge is power. And it's all about research. And that's what you gentlemen are supposed to do. Research. Oh yeah, fun fact, fun fact. The swastika is like, it means totally different in like Indian culture. Like, especially like with like, I forgot how it went, but like Hitler got it from like somewhere in like India, from like people who like meditate and all that, the monks or whatever. So Hitler like changed, like you said, during influence changed the way it looked. So he influenced the whole entire world to think that that symbol was very negative. But it actually is not. Knowledge is power, gentlemen. Can we go to the next slide? All right. Last slide. I just need you gentlemen to know that we collectively believe in you. If you want to be a great leader, remember to treat all people with respect at all times. All of us have been extremely respectful on this, on our presentations. For one, because you never know when you need their help. And two, because it's a sign of respect to people. And what all great leaders should do is respect one another. You should be able to be open to uh, debates. You should be able op and open to differing opinions, differing lifestyles. Uh, different educational backgrounds, economic backgrounds, because there's something that you can draw from everyone around you. So never close yourself off completely. You should always listen. That's one of the things I told you guys before. Effective leaders are someone that listen. If you listen to the opinions around you, then it helps you form your opinion. You do that research, you present, you influence. You gentlemen are the ones that we're going to be looking for uh, as far as leaders coming out in the extreme, extreme near future. So I just wanted to thank you for this evening. And Brother Bennett, I'm turning it back over to you. Brother King, you're welcome to jump in at any point. Kind of recapping, you know, what we've hit on several times. And, you know, this is, you know, this is my part of it is, you know, talking about, you know, what is leadership and someone who influences others to action or decision. Uh, you must have <clears throat> to be a leader. You have to have others, you know, uh, you know, your group, team, organization, uh, to lead someone has to follow. And, you know, we talk leadership styles, and this kind of really gets into a little bit of what uh, Brother King talked about and different, you know, some of them are just different terms. So what, what he called his theory X, you know, is really very much directive leadership. And so I won't go through all that, but, you know, the examples of when, you know, to that you want to be a directive leader 
is in an emergency type of situation or a situation where you have very uh, young or inexperienced uh, people that are following you. And so, and so again, you know, situation or the example I used before was, you know, if, if I'm in your house and fire breaks out, you know, I really want you who knows your house to tell me, you know, what I need to do. I don't want to sit around and have a debate on what we should do or have a vote on what we should do. I need someone to say, get up, you're going out the back door, you're going to turn left and go right. And I want somebody to tell me what to do and I want to follow it. Uh, very similar to, uh, to his, uh, to Brother King, when he talked about uh, with uh, uh, Theory Y, you know, and, uh, coaching leadership and his Theory Y kind of encompasses several, but coaching leadership, and again, example is a coach or a teacher working with a student. And so that's someone given direction working to improve, but there's two-way conversation. Uh, supportive leadership is, again, a little bit into the theory why, and it's more of an example of, you know, of a leadership style you're going to do maybe with a group of your friends, and maybe you're deciding what you're going to do and where you're going to go. And that's something, people that you have high trust in. Whoops, wrong way. And then uh, the delegating leader, which is someone that really kind of turns over all the decision making and problem solving to the group. A good example is, is a lot of times artists when they're collaborating or you know they're doing creative stuff or you have a group of experts, and it's a lot more of a delegating leadership style. So, and again, I'm much more of a, uh, I believe you have to have a situational leadership style because different situations require different leadership styles and, and the same leadership style that, that I would use with uh, as a, a leader with a young group of kids is going to be a different leadership style than I'm going to use when I'm talking with you as high school, middle school students in a capital league program. So, you know, the thing we, we've never got into is discussing uh, you, you have a group of people and so who becomes a leader? You know, group, you got to have an action, you got to have a decision to make, you know, you've got followers. So who becomes a leader? And so even some of you that are vice presidents of your Kappa League chapter or have an office in your Kappa League chapter, or you may be a team captain uh, on, on an athletic team, because you have a title doesn't always mean you are the leader. And so, uh, so again, a group, you know, it is who, how do you figure out who becomes the leader of the group? And so the, my theory is, I call it uh, the filling in the hole theory. And that is every group has people that have that, have certain strengths and weaknesses. And so the person who is able to fill in the whole of what's miss missing in that group is the one who ends up that becoming the leader. So uh, a real simple example of that uh, that I think about is uh, if I'm playing basketball and I got four people on my team that want to shoot. The person that's willing to do the passing ends up typically being the leader in that group because they're providing what's missing. If everybody wants to, if everybody wants to shoot or everybody wants to do the same, it's what part of the group is missing. And so again, you can have multiple leaders in, a, in, in, in different situations. So for example, you, uh, you're with a group of your friends. And so you're deciding where you're going to go and what you're going to do that evening. Well, you know, the person that starts off being the leader might be the person who's got the transportation because that's how you're going to get to wherever you're going to go. But once you get there, 
the person who might, you know, become the leader of that group as the situation changes might end up being the one that, you know, knows uh, one, one of the one of the people that are over across the room that is with three or four young ladies that maybe you want to go meet. And so if, if one of you knows who that young lady is, one of those young ladies, he might be the leader to end up going over there, and bringing over everybody over to do the introductions and get things kicked off. So uh, things I want you to kind of think about is who becomes the leader, you know, who provides, the person who becomes the leader typically provides what's missing. And you have multiple leaders in different situations. And uh, again, I can't tell you how many situations I've been in where someone else had a title and I, be, I was the leader of the group even though someone else had a title. Or someone else had a title and somebody different uh, you know, became the leader. So I'd like to get some, so think about, think about your group of friends that uh, before the pandemic you, hang, you hung out with all the time and now maybe you are doing FaceTime or, or whatever you're doing with your friends. Think about your friends and think about who is the leader, who typically winds up being the leader in your group of friends. And why? Uh, anyone want to? Anyone want to volunteer to talk about their group and who's the leader? Well, I want to say there is a. For me personally, and my group of friends, I want to say there's like a definitive one leader, because situ in situate kind of like situational leadership. Different situation calls for different leaderships. So another guy knows more things about one thing, and another guy knows things more things about one another thing. So, but uh, for the most part, there is uh, one specific guy that we all turn to because he is like the senior out of all of us. He he graduated already, and he's out of out of school. So he, he so he knows everything. So we kind of listen to him. But uh, for the most so the most part, listen to him. But uh, situationally, sometimes I know more things, or another guy knows more things about this specific situation. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, Devin, you want to offer anything? Yes. I would say, like, for me, I have my friends. Like, my, one of my friends, he knows a lot more about cars than I do. So I'll, I'll always ask him stuff about cars. But say for like school, for instance, or like things we need to know for school, or like pages in a textbook, then he'll go, he'll come to me for that information because I know for me, but he knows that I pay attention a lot in school, so I'll have that information. Good, good, good. Chester? Chester? All right. Cameron? Um, for me? Yeah, yeah, go huh? ahead, Chester. Yeah. Um... I would say I, I'd probably be the leader of my friend group, group just because I'm the most adventurous out of all my friends. So I'll do the most things. Like they'll come to me for advice and turn things like if they want to get into something or like to ask me about like fashion because that's something that I'm really into. So they'll ask me like advice about that stuff. So I'd say... Yeah, I would say for the most part, I'm the leader, but it can shift depending on the situation. Uh, Cameron. Um, there really, there's a split between my friends because I also um, have certain benefits and my friends also have certain benefits. So based on the situation, one of us might be the leader and the others follow. Very good. Anyone else have anything they want to say? Any questions for, uh, before we get ready to close out? Any questions for Brother King, Brother Sykes, myself on leadership? It's not much of a question, more of a statement. 
Sure. So, yeah, I appreciate y'all. I uh, appreciate y'all uh, teaching us. And I also appreciate y'all out the Kappa Leaguers for being a part of this. I thank y'all. Y'all have made me learn a lot. And I appreciate the Kappa Leaguers doing this with me because I know it's, a, it's summer. <laughs> you kind of just want to be out, but I appreciate you doing this with me. It just, it's just going to be worth it, man. It's just going to be worth it. You're welcome. Thank you, Jameer. Thank you, Jameer. Uh, so just kind of getting ready to close and uh, want to go through uh, some of the homework I got from last time. And, you know, and I thought it was good. You know, uh, one was from Cameron Whitney. And, you know, we talked about Hawthorne effects and talked about, you know, when the soccer coach watched him, his team practice, you know, it, it made them work harder. I'm not sure who God Creature is, uh, but talked about his homework uh, when Trump took away the trans rights. It shows he doesn't care about citizens, and that was, does leadership reveal character? Yeah. And, and uh, I had another example here of where leadership revealed character. President Obama made a Patient Protection Affordable Care Act, shows he cares for his citizens. So that was kind of the homework I, I was going to start doing each time. I need you to make sure that you are, uh, if you only have your email or your whatever name you have uh, uh, on there, I can't tell who actually did the assignment. So, you know, it's, it's like you saw in some of the homework where, you know, it, says, you know, it tells my name's Cameron Whitney or, you know, put your name in your homework responses. So, to the best I can calculate now, uh, with the names I have, you know, we've had four total assignments. And that's outside the assignments that uh, Brother Sykes has given you. And so those are the ones that have completed three of the assignments, and those are the ones that have completed two. So I do say, you know, you can go back and make up past assignments, but it's going to be on the completion of the assignments is going to determine you know, if you get a gift card at the end of this and how much of a gift card that you get at the end of this. So to understand your final, one of your final assignments is going to be to turn in that journal uh, that we've asked you to keep. So uh, anyone have any questions about that? All right. Well, and uh, our next meeting will be July 21st. Uh, review your homework, post your assignments to Google Classroom, keep your journal. My closing, uh, my closing quote is, it, it's, success is not the key to happiness. Happiness is the key to success. If you love what you're doing, what you're doing, you will be successful. So, and I also, because what we're going to throw up for discussion next time, and I'm going to, we've held you late some night, so I'm going to let you go early tonight. Uh, what uh, I want you to I want you to think about is about uh, our, our current president and what kind of leader is he? And so there are there are a couple of things I want you to I'm just going to throw out and I want you to think about. You know, some people would say that he is not a good leader because of all the negative things that he does and the negative examples that he sets. And we've talked about some of them in the past week. So, and that he shows, you know, leadership reveals character. He showed how bad his character is. So that's one way of looking at it. Some people might say that he's a good leader, not because he has good character, or he's a good person or have good values, but some people might categorize that he's a good leader because he got to the position that he got to. And so um, something I want you to think about. Nah. Hey, I mean, yeah, that's I'm sorry, I just got to say this. The same leader that those people like is the same leader that went to hide in his bunker when people were protesting peacefully all over the United States. And, he ha and all he had to say about it was a tweet. Like, honestly, how can y'all trust this dude? And, and, and we, do, and we like, don't. Honestly, he like. He never did. 
He's he's like a child with the phone. I don't understand how how people. I agree. I'm I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying that some people would say that there are because he's uh, got to the position he's got to that he's shown some good leadership. And, and believe me, I didn't vote for him. I don't support him. You know, everybody makes their own choices. So, but you know, it, it, it's it's the same way. Some people will say that Hitler was a good leader. And we all know all the negative and bad things. Oh, he, he was our worst. Wait, can so, we just say influencers instead of leaders? No, he was, success, he was successful in some of the things that, his, that he did. His goal, however, just shadowed his... Like, 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 if he took a, like, like if he took a different occupation than being a dictator, I'm pretty sure he would have did some pretty cool things. But nah, he had to go murder generations and populations of people like... Come on, bro. Who were our Jewish? Uh, uh, he, he's he's a, he's a man, he's manipulative and an influencer because like he's able to influence other people to do like what he did was very strategic and very smart. Like he even had a guideline he followed about people who need. But to he know got that people hate, but, but he honestly has people hating other now, people. Hear me out. Hear me so, out. Hear so, me out. He no. Hear me out. He was super smart gentleman. about it. But he else. has people. Well, look, he has he has a a group of people hating another group of people for no obvious reason. He hasn't even no. why he no. tried to murder a no. billion, million people, bro. Like, no, he, he literally... Very, no. So, so, so he yeah. let all them. He so, let so, all of them. Brother so, Renato. So, hey, this is, this is a great discussion. And that's the reason I threw it out, was to see. So your, your other thought to think about is... I mean, we just got through thinking about we we just got through talking about character. Do have the worst character? He's, he's, he's got the worst. So 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 my question is, how do bad people get in positions to be leaders? How do bad people and, and we named two of them right here, and I'm sure we can all name the way they mean interest. Honestly, they, interest. They, they 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 interest. I, I have to the say. bad people they, lead they people. Think, it's about it's about they they think ahead or if they have to think ahead for gentlemen, gentlemen, uh, gentlemen. All right, all right, all right. The bad so, people hold, hold, lead people. Gentlemen, right, so, one second. So good, but hey, Mr. Jackson has something he wanted to add, but that will be that will be part of your homework for this for next time is how do bad people get to be in leadership positions. Go ahead, Mr. Jackson. Uh, well, I would say... Oh, so, so, gentlemen, um, what I want you to think about is you're looking at the results of the leader, not what made the leader. So you need... You, you should look at it with a different lens. You're looking at what Hitler's results were, not how he came into power, how he influenced. Again, as Brother Burnett said, and Brother Sykes said, character built something. So what was in his character to the people that he was talking to, not the people who were seeing the results of his leadership. So you have to remember, leadership happens at a point in time, not at the end. So everybody will always judge how well you did as a leader when you get out, but not how well you're doing while you're sitting in that position. Well, like, isn't, like, didn't he kill himself, bro? Hey, oh, like, oh, 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 what hey. did that have to do with what he just said? That made, like, no. I, I, hey, uh, let's respect one oh, another. Oh, 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 Mr. Jackson, you had something you wanted to say. Go ahead. Come off mute and say it. Uh, I, 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 I would say it's like people, like, people in this position of power, they get, I, I, how do I say? It? It's like they have people following them, and they think, okay, if I do this, everybody's gonna follow me. So it's like I feel like the bad people they need to start doing good things because that people. I guess I think I'm confused. Wait, am I, am I confused? It's like, it's like, I think you got the right thinking progress, like process. Yeah, you got the right thinking process. Like, yeah, like for real, for real. I'm going to say this. Hitler, he did a good job of what he wanted to do. What made him so successful was his ability to network with millions and millions of people over one common interest. 
what makes leaders so great is their common interest. If you're able, and like he said, influence. If you're able to say what you got to say and do what you got to do, you end up leading like over a million people to think that, you know, mass genocide is a good thing. Then you succeed in what you wanted to do. But then we have to decide and think about character. What was his character? What was his thinking process when he said, well, today I'm going to wake up and kill a whole bunch of people because I don't like that they have, you know, brown and brown hair and different physical features, which was, you know, in my opinion, it's kind of stupid because, dude, you had brown hair too. You, you didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes. So obviously your thinking process was, was somewhere that it wasn't supposed to be. But in terms of killing a lot of people, yeah, you succeeded. So clap it up. So Mr. So Mr. Martin, I'm going to actually challenge you. Okay? Your challenge is to find out the reason why Hitler did not like Jewish people. Because there's a reason why he felt the way he felt. So you're saying he, he influenced people to do that and you don't understand why? Your challenge is to figure out why. Okay. All right. Hey, gentlemen. So we had a, uh, I'm glad we had a lively discussion at the end. Again, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you taking your time. Uh, Brother Sykes, uh, Brother King, appreciate you presenting. Brother Jackson, Brother Asib, uh, appreciate you guys as always. You guys be safe. And I will see you on the, I will see you on the 22nd. All right. Peace. Take care. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you.